Right, this morning we're going to do a little workshop. A student and I and I'm going to have her working with me as we do this lovely little scene up in Scotland with the rainbow. I've taken two photographs, uh, or made two prints, one to give the lighter reflections and the other to bring out more in the sky. What we want to do especially with this is look at the various warm and cool greys. I want to show how to mix all these different greys, how to get the reflections, and then how to use the brushwork to get the effect of glazing and these reeds and the trees above, uh, and, and also uh, how we can use the glazing afterwards to get the effect of the rainbow and the reflections. So that's what we're going to be doing today with acrylics. Brushes we're going to need, all I should need is a couple of filberts, uh, an eight and a six perhaps, a uh, rigger brush and a medium round, in this case a four. I reckon we can get away with those on these small canvases. So first we just want to work out a basic composition, then we'll be straight into painting the greys. I'm going to start by just uh, doing a light blue wash, not a pencil, a little bit of blue, just thin down, just to sketch out my composition. Uh, so I know where things are going, that's all. Right. I know that's going to be about here. Whatever I do here I have to do above because it's going to be a mirror reflection. So up here, this dark area, I'll have to mimic that approximately. Don't have to be exact, we just want to, to know where things are going, that's all. And then coming down behind there, those hills. And all the way down here, another little one here, coming in mistily. Over here we've got a distant mountain there. And then a larger one comes up here and mistily goes down into there. And we've got the rainbow coming through here. And that's all we need to know. The rest we can put in when we, when we do it. So we want to learn about mixing the greys at first, and we've got warm and cool greys here, sort of slightly bluer greys in places, and browner greys in others, okay? And whatever we put up here, we're going to be using down here as well, so when we mix this colour here, we'll put some down here. The first thing we do is, we add to the white, we don't um, mix the colour and then put white in. So take, I'll take a bit of white here, and plenty of it, not too much water, just uh, nice mixture. Get, get, get it moving with the brush first of all. To make greys, our simplest way is to use blue and brown. In this case a very small touch of this cobalt blue will do it. You can make it lighter later. I like that word, lighter later. A bit of cobalt blue to make it a light blue. And then I want to make it grey by adding the brown. So that gives me the light blue. Now if I add a little bit of the brown to that, a little touch of uh, burnt umber, we will see it go to a grey. There we go. And we're getting closer towards this grey here now. Uh, so that's still very blue, isn't it? So it's still too blue, that one. Mm -hmm. We don't see that colour going on anywhere else. So a little bit down here of that blue-grey. So while I've got it on my brush and I've actually mixed it, I'm going to put a little bit here and a little bit just here where it's reflecting from the... Um, mountain there as well, coming up through here. So if you do the same now, and take a little bit of that blue-grey, that's it. You put it in the same place on yours, and then the same place above, that's it, up there, yeah. It goes almost right up, plenty of paint, put plenty of paint on your brush, that's it. It goes almost right up to the uh, mountain top. And I put a little bit more brown into it, and I'm coming up into here with this brown. So if you take that, that colour now, a little bit of this one with the brown in, that's it, don't do any brush. And when I put it up here, it's coming right down through here, and I'm just rubbing it on with the brush, rubbing it in with the canvas like this. So it comes right the way down to here, and up through here like that, that's it. Now we're trying to do a painting in about an hour here, so this is the sort of speed we'd be working at if we were out of doors, with the mosquitoes and the midges trying to bite us. It's a good idea to learn this technique. Just rubbing it and blending it in here, the background. Right up and through there. Blending it into the canvas, and scrubbing it in with the brush. But you can see the cool and warm greys happening there. Plenty of paint on your brush, don't have any canvas showing through. Make sure that all the canvas goes, so rub it well in. You get these differences in these greys, these lovely deep greys. So make sure you've covered that as quick as you can, then we're going to go on. 
rub it well in. Use the tip of your brush a bit more, like push, push it in sideways, backwards and forwards, like sit there, just paint with the brush. Not just one way, both ways. Rub it well in like that, that's it. That's, that's the way, yeah? So both ways with the brush, to push the brush tip into the canvas, that's it. But that's going to help us blend in a minute as well. Get rid of all the white, that's it. Rub well into these, that's it. Too. The lighter colour, take some white again and mix a little bit of yellow ochre in. That's a light colour, a little bit too light. Let's test it, it's far too light still. So white and then add the colour in. Don't put the colour first and then add the white, you'll end up with gallons of it. This is going to give us the, the lighter colour of the sky. And into that I'm going to add just a little bit of pink, just to give a slight bit of colour. There we go. And I'm going to paint the whole of the rest of that sky with that and then come back in with the greys afterwards. Make sure you cover all this white. You're not covering the white. That's it. Both ways with the brush. Push the brush tip in. That's it. If you don't do that you'll find it's going to look funny later. So then we want to put this pink colour. Once you've done that, wash your brush. Make sure you get it all done first. Right through to here. And it's a very sort of stormy sky. That's what the weather's going to do. You can see I'm using the brush backwards and forwards. And I'm actually letting it blend into the clouds here. Are you ready for the pink yet? Blending right down through. This is why I'm using the brush both ways, to push the paint into the canvas and also to blend it in with the greys around it. Right, so as soon as you're ready, wash your brush off and uh, I'll mix up some more of this pink. And what I'm doing is I'm using the brush backwards and forwards look, as we did before. Not just one way, that's it. Use the, try, try and use the tip of your brush, tickle the tip of your brush a bit more. Backwards and forwards like this look. Pushing it in, just like the little tickle like that. Can you do that? That's better, that's it. That's going to be a very useful technique because that's going to help you blend. So just push down and really push that brush into there. Because by tickling it like that look I can blend. See I'm blending these strokes in together by going backwards and forwards with the brush just quickly. That's uh, brush skills we call it. And, uh, I'm going to need these brush skills right down here as well, all the way through here. I want to get rid of this white canvas as quickly as possible. And we're going to make a cooler grey in a moment. We're going to go back to the original grey first, then make a cooler grey and start blending them in. Tick, back, tickle backwards and forwards, you're still doing one way. You've got to get you've got to learn this technique of brushing in so we lose all the marks underneath and the things start to blend. You have to learn this technique. Take some of that other light grey again. And then we start to blend, this is what I'm doing here, we start to blend the shapes in together with these little tickles. So we get this effect of this soft cloud. No canvas showing. You've got to start blending in with these strokes like this, backwards and forwards, just blending it across and in. Try holding the bus a little bit further up. Try holding it up here a bit more. There you go. That's better look. There you go. It's a new technique for you, totally new. This is, this is an impressionist oil painting technique where you're reaching out. And this is one of the reasons for having longer brushes, that we can reach out with the, with the sharper <coughs> brush and see what we're doing right down here. I'm going to come back in with these blues a bit and make it a little bit cooler again in the, in the blue-grey. Start bringing some blues up into here a bit more now. You're still doing your lights and blending those. So this is the, the cream again but with a little more white in it. Just to get this, you see how Changing my little brush strokes, That's, you're getting used to it, but just little flicks, try and get little flicks with your fingers. Too big, just little, little strokes like this, little, just the tip of your brush, blending in. This is a whole, this, is a, this lesson is about really brush work as much as anything else. We're talking about colours as well, but we are really trying to teach you how to use the brush differently than you've been used to. It's not like painting a wall, this. <laughs> We've got a little delicate tickle to the brush, that's what we're trying to do. And this is the effect we want. So you've got to blend everything in down here as well. You've got to start blending all of these in to get the effects we've got of the water like that. So no hard edges and watch where the shapes are going. You're going to try and pick out these shapes like I have here. I put the light here to pick out the gentle shape of that 
hill coming down there and then how we do the brush strokes will help to form the clouds up here as well so now I'm just tickling down the brush strokes to try and form these, these clouds and make them look a bit like the clouds are on here and that sky is almost done the next thing now is to start building up the mountains in the background in exactly the same way just blending them into the background like that so while you're finishing off, you keep putting, that's it, that's good, that's it, keep doing that, just blend up your, and the same here, all of these have, we all blended together to look like this, look, different, different directions of brush strokes, we've got to work in your lights up here, so look at that grey cloud, there, you're almost there with that, now it's down here with the water, do a bit more blending down here, see how I blended all these little, these various shapes, you've got all these various shapes here, so find where the greys come down here, just put a little bit more in in places, and start to blend those in, Tickle your brush in, that's, that's the way, you've got it, yeah. That's lovely, that's, now, now you're getting the technique, well done, that's it, that's great. And you see how it's giving this lovely soft effect with the water, isn't it? Yeah, that's good, yeah, little, little tickles. Uh, so we've got the effect coming there of the water. Now, we've got these shapes starting here, you see how the light comes through there a bit more here. So we've got to start drawing into these shapes with the, with the light a bit more and feeling these shapes where they are. So a little bit more there, those darker hills coming in down here. And it just vanishes into there, look, see how it vanishes? This is what I was saying about the tickling with the brush, it just vanishes into the mist there. That's better, yeah. That's the colour you want, so there you go. Not too much water on your brush, there we go, now try that. That's it, little, that's right. So it's quite firm on this edge, look. Um, now we've got this hill coming up here, these lighter ones and dark. If we've got the same colour anywhere else, we need to do it. So this colour here is coming in down here, isn't it? So where I've got a dark edge here, there's this deeper blue bit, this is just here now. So take a little bit of that deep blue, this, this blue grey on the tip of your brush. Just get plenty on the tip of your brush and just put it in where you can see it, where those darks are there. But right through here, and it comes up behind here. In fact, just behind here, there's a lot more blue. I'm going to take almost some blue directly from there. And I'm going to come into here with that blue. <coughs> against it. Really look for these shapes, the important shapes. Right down through to the dark here. Just finish that off for me. So a little bit more blue on your brush from here, look. Not too much, that's it. And just look at these shapes here. Make sure you get those. And the same blue from here is reflecting down here. So if you look what I'm doing here now, that same blue, a bit more of that blue, is reflecting down here as well. So put a little bit more of that blue into there and get a slightly harder edge here. You want a sharper edge there. And then, so do that first. Yeah, what's that sharp edge? Tip of your, look, you've got a brush that's, that's it. You've got a brush that will go big or thin. Yeah, so you're painting thin at the moment like that. Yeah, learning about brush, brush today, learning about brush work. So I'm just going to tickle in with the blade of my brush. I'm not going flat ways, I'm going with the blade of it, edge ways. There's one thing about teaching is that um, you often get so used to painting yourself in a certain way that you forget that some other people, beginners, don't even uh, understand the basics. And you know what I was just saying then about using the brush flat or edge ways is something that I just take for granted. Whereas I, didn't, I forgot that you wouldn't, you see. So I've got to explain it again. So we're just tickling these colours on here to feel the edge of that hill that's reflecting in here, this mountain that's reflecting in here. Down here the same, we're going to bring that, that warm-up mountain from earlier. Good. OK, we're getting there, that's great. Now you can see your misty hills in the background, we've got our misty mountains. We're going to start painting the lighter areas now. So we're going to start painting these sunlit bits in. So I'm going to mix some grey-greens for that. You can still use the light colour we used here earlier, so I'm still using up old paint, so wash your brush now, that's it. I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow into that white that we had earlier, just test it on here, that's about right. A little bit more, a bit of lemon yellow, a little bit of chrome yellow into that white, there we go. Now I've got to look at this shape here, so we're looking at that shape there where the rainbow starts to come in. So just here, right through here. We have a hill coming up there like that, against this dark here, it's quite sharp against that dark, just blending a little at the edges, coming up there, and you see little strokes of it, it's not 
painted all the way in. We're just making little strokes of light that the sunlight's catching there. Look how simple that was, but I have left that colour in between, look. We haven't just painted it all the way across, I've painted it like it's coming in between as well. So where these little bits of light are, we're going to paint them in there now. That's it, you've got your sunlight, well done. Yeah, just put that onto yours so you can, we can see that you're doing it too. So you've got your sunlight coming down through here. Now you might need just to go back, um, make sure we've got that's a sharp edge there, that's good. With a little bit of the, the blue-grey, just make sure you've got these little bits of woodland and shadow that are coming in down here. Do you know what I mean like that? Look. Just little touches of it, not too much. No, put some paint in your brush now, that's it. You, you, no, no, just put it cleanly, little strokes into here that, that are on. That, that, watch where it is on your picture, you see here, look. That's right, yeah. Follow it along the hills, there you go, might make a slightly longer stroke here and there, so it's a bit more like the hills, there we go, like that, yeah? And of course it could come right through here, isn't it, as well, there we go, a bit more through there, we've got the reflection. There we go, that's good. So we've got our sunlight now in the background, we've got to start doing these very subtle changes of greys now. So these very, we've got to do these very subtle changes of, of greys here, we've got this bit, this light bit, now we've got the rainbow actually coming through there, so I'm going to take that grey again. And just use a little bit of that grey to softly have to make a bit more. Just we want to block in and get rid of any white canvas. So we've got to lose all the white canvas now. And then we're almost ready to do the rainbow back there, aren't we? So to bring that pink I've just done just into the sunlit bit here a bit as well. And we're about ready to look at this very dark colour here. We're going to put some light back in there in a moment. But what I want to do there is now what's our deepest blue, do you remember? What our very darkest blue was. What was the name of it? Uh, Sounds Cer like Russian. Cerulean. So, no, Cerulean is that lovely um, turquoise, that very oh, light one. Sounds like Russian. Rhymes with Russian. Something <coughs> blue. Russian? No. No. Nope. Starts with a P. P. And sounds like Russian. Remember? Prussian blue. Prussian blue. Prussian blue, yeah. Is our deepest blue, and it's lovely for making dark. So I'm going to take some of that over to here. Take some of the brown to go with it to make it very, very dark and warm. You've got your clean brush now. Got a nice clean brush now for this. Are you ready? Clean your brush. And we're going to carefully paint in the whole of this dark shape. And remember you've got tree edges look here, yeah? So whatever you do here, you're going to have to do down here. So if I make a mark here, I've got to make the same mark there. If I make that mark like that there, I've got to do the same mark like that there. Right through down to here. And I'm going to use my brush to give a slightly broken edge look like that. See, I'm using the edge of the brush lightly to give a slightly broken edge, which is like the trees coming up and growing into there. So I'm going to use the edge of the brush lightly broken over the surface here right up through there, just dabbing it on, one way only in this case, we're only using it one way this time, right up through here, get the broken edge of these trees, and then I'm going to do the mixture again as I was doing before, and rub it right into the canvas, like that. And look at that lovely effect we get, we've got a whole load of trees instantly against it. When I come down below, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, and mirror those marks down below, one stroke first, like this. So we're, we're just mirroring whatever I've done above. Just blending it slightly at the edges there. And then I've got to come back and work that right into the canvas. So. So far it's taken us Oh, only about 20 minutes, so we've, not, we've done very, very well. There we go now. Now, on your brush, plenty of paint, but loads of it, really loaded up. Now hold the brush with me, just wait a minute, don't do anything yet, because I'm just going to bring the camera around. Right, now I want you to do this with me, and ever so gently, come to the top of your trees here, and it's just about here, look, just dab carefully, dab. Just dab it ever so gently, look, dab downwards. There you are. See, we're getting those effect of those trees now? 
Come right the way down, come, come down in the right shape, that's it at the top. So it's broken at the top, isn't it, like that, you see? All the way along, just dabbing along, there we go. And then when you've done that, you're going to come back to here and go on hard and paint it right the way in. Now here you've got to go the other way around, and you've got to dab carefully in reverse, like that. That's it, okay, great stuff. To let the feeling of these pine trees in the distance, and my brush is slightly broken, so that's good, that's great, Hammer, that's good. Yes, but big, bigger strokes here, because you're doing slightly bigger here, just, just bigger chunks, just chunk, 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 like that, yeah? That's it. A bit more paint on your brush. That's lovely, that's the way. And when you come to here, then you're going to do the very light bits like that, yeah? That's good, that's good. Now, paint in between, yeah? So plenty of paint now, and you whack it in between, all right? That's the way. That's it. Plenty of paint in your brush. Whack it on. Let's get it done. Get rid of any white. Don't leave any white um, canvas behind, will you? That's it. All the way through to the other side. That's the way, Hammer. That's lovely. Yeah, that's good. Now, you see here we've got a little bit of blue there. So take a little bit of that blue from there. Straight on the same brush, you'll be alright. Straight into the neat paint. There we go. Now, just where these blue areas are here, like I've done there, look. Just add some into here, around here. <coughs> Straight on, just don't blend it, just put it straight on the top, just gently. There you go. That's lovely, that's beautiful. There you go, look. And you're tickling with your brush. You've learned so much about the brush today because you're tickling with it now, using it more gently. And whatever you have here has to come down here, doesn't it? So we need a bit more of the blue just down here. There we are. And look, your brush works so improved, even in, even in 20 minutes. Right, we're going to have to have a little break, I think. Yep, you want to do a little bit up there, you could put a bit of blue, we've got to come carefully in and just, just tint it a little more here, but just, just be careful there, yeah. Now these paintings are just about dry, it's time to move on, and we've got to do the lines of reflection uh, just coming through the centres here. Okay. Right, so we're going to move now to a slightly smaller brush. Have it there, yes. That one? That one, yep, yeah. no, the other one, that one, that's it. And we've got a light area across the centre here, so I'm going to mix quite a light, a mid-green, um, with a little bit of that Prussian from earlier. So remember, you can talk and ask questions if you want. Yes, that's okay, fine. that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's about the painting, and don't swear. <laughs> right, so I've mixed a little bit of a, a, a mid-green here, and I'm going to carefully paints just a little bit wet still, but right across the centre with the edge of the brush. Just tickle it across, look. So do you wet the brush before putting in a paint or Go not? Go straight in the paint, because the paint's ready to go. Right across, little brush strokes, right across the centre like that. It's not an absolutely perfect line, it's slightly broken. And then just below, it's reflecting, because this is the rushes in the distance. So we do exactly the same thing, just below it. And that gives us that lovely effect of the, the rushes in the background. We'll add a little bit of light to it. It's been a little bit lighter perhaps. Mine, my paint isn't dry yet. No, mine isn't, but it doesn't matter. You're just going gently across and just blending it slightly. Try and get a slight, like a bit more of a line to it. You've got to, you've got dabs, but I certainly feel that if I'm standing, it helps better. I think so. For the painters. Now, the next bit. When you've done that, we've got a little bit of tops of trees showing with the same colour look. Just little brush strokes. Remember how we did those brush strokes before? Little brush strokes coming along here to the tops of these trees. Just a little bit here. That's good. And you'll find. So there's a little bit of the the very light green. Also, is coming in. I'll just bring that camera around again. We've got a little bit of the very light green coming in between here as well. Just, just down through in between these bits of... Down through there. Through here to get that misty effect there as well. Okay? Yeah. Now, because we've got it there, it's going to come down here as well, isn't it? So we've got to, you'll have to put a little bit of this green down here as well, okay? So take it more. There's plenty on your brush, that's right. And just up and through this bit here, that's right. If you're reflecting this in the same way, it has to come this way. Sure. Yeah. Put it in with the edge of your brush like that, that's it. 
That's good. That's good. That's it. That's got it. Well, fine. Here we are. Yeah, well done. <coughs> Quick as that, so it wasn't so hard, yeah? We're going to paint the rainbow now. Now, the rainbow... Um, I did this print just to remind you of what the colours are to a rainbow. Because they're not quite so easy to see in this particular picture, are they? So here's our rainbow, and we know that those colours are the ones we're going to use. And we're going to do a bit of glazing now. So I'm going to make up the paint with a little bit of white, so it's got some body to it. I'm going to paint these colours just glazed through here carefully. We don't want to wreck our painting, so we'll start with the lightest colours. I'm going to start with my lemon yellow and a bit of white. Keep it quite pure and water so that it's glazing. And I should, I'm going to come from here right down to here. And are you right handed? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you see, I'm standing here so I can get an arc like that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We want to be, you can rest your finger if you want, but you'll be smudging your painting. So we want to be able to get this arc coming in in one stroke like this. Right the way through like that, look. In one stroke. Right through down to comes right down into there. There we go. One stroke, one nice nice arc coming in. And I'm going to use the water to blend out again. Because I've got a bit much there. I don't want so much... Oh, I've got too much paint on my brush now. I'll just lift a bit of this out and just blend it because I've got to put other colours into that. So there's my arc of the rainbow coming around just subtly through here. I'm going to blend it out with some fresh water. But it just disappears up into here, so I'm going to blend that right in with fresh water. And then I'm going to come up to my pink above that, so a little bit of pink. I'm going to mix that above, just next to it here. Thin, thin coats of paint, and in goes my arc again. Thin paint, coming down here for the rainbow. A little bit thicker, but stronger. So a little bit more red here. So this is giving me my lovely pink coming down through in an arc. You see I'm using my arm in an arc here and then there's a bit more pink this side as well. And I'm going to use clean water again to soften that down and through again. I need my blue in here so I'm going to come up to my back to my blues very carefully just bring in some blue through here and I'm going to soften that in in a moment. Because there's a green in between yellow and blue. Yeah, <coughs> that's right. Well, if, we, if we're blending this yellow and blue together, what colour are we going to get? Green. Yeah. So we're going to get that a bit anyway, aren't we? But we can mm -hmm. come back in. So again, I want to keep it thin. This has gone a little bit heavy now. I'm going to use water and just thin it in. Just blend it through and in. Get the feeling of this rainbow. Back to my yellow again. I'm just touching up a bit, bit of the brighter colour here where it just comes in bits of light there, just to get this feeling of luminosity, the light coming down and through, because where the hills are behind they go a bit darker, so here that hill is coming through and I'm going to just bring that through a little bit there, just to show it's behind the rainbow and the rainbow is transparent, again now we'll just blend it a bit there. And then, having done that, we have to do the same down here. Mm -hmm. So you go ahead, and I'm going to carry on just doing my rainbow and reflecting it down here. And I'm now going to bring my arc this way. Is there yellow you made, or did you take it down? It's here. It's just a little tiny touch of, of that. You've got to use it very thinly now, that's the thing, yeah. I've got lots of green still in <laughs> We can clean the water if you want, but if the water's a problem. Um, too much. Keep it subtle. So somebody like me, <laughs> would it be better to just draw with a pencil or go straight with it? Try and go straight in. Yeah, if you put a pencil mark, it's going to show this is because we're doing glazes, aren't we, you mm. see? So you don't want... Um, so a little bit of the turf here as well. 
When I teach doing water, we do the depth first normally. We do the, the reflections in the depth of the water. And then if there's any surface ripples like here, like we've got lilies and things, we do those at the end. So okay. moving water is different. If no, we're doing, I was just talking about if, rainbow. Well, if we're doing moving water and so on, um, then we'd be painting with so a lot more gestural and everything. That's right. But here, <coughs> so here, we're just painting the reflections of what is above in the same sort of technique. Okay. But we're going to put the surface over in a minute. So once we've got this rainbow on, we are ready for the last part, which is rather fun. Then you start to bring in your other colours. You've got the very light pink to bring through. And So watch where the colours are now. Can you see on there all right? Yeah. Yeah. So, we so you're slightly stronger down there here. What's that? That's what you're looking at. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you've got the pink. You've got pink here. You've got a bit more stronger yellow there. It's a little bit more yellow just this and coming down this bit here. So it's a bit stronger there, look. Mm -hmm. So look where it goes strong and, and lighter, that's the point I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Some places it's, it it's almost disappears, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, and it disappears the, the next right. place it comes out a bit more, so we've yeah. got to look so here. We've got quite a strong yellow just there, look. Yeah. Just here. And would it be alright if I, like the, when I do one colour, I do on the top and the bottom at the same time? Yeah, absolutely, that's that right. Yeah. probably yeah. be easier. Yeah, 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 no, no, that's, that's <coughs> great. That's a good idea. Yeah, you do that. A little bit stronger yellow there. Then we just use our fingers to blend it a bit. There we go. So we've got a lovely effect of the rainbow coming there already. That's great. Well done. Who knows, my rainbow might look better than yours. Yeah, it's quite often students. <coughs> I show them what to do and then they come up with something better. You don't uh, always do better than the student. No, it's, good. it's good that. So Give you confidence. Yellow, blue, this size. Which blue did you take? This one or that one? Um, I was using a little bit of that and or this one in the white. Yeah, that, that one, that one there, this one here, but just a little bit in here first and get it nice and clean, yeah. Keep it thin, nice and nice and thin. So, there you are. Right, right, I've mixed up a dark now and I'm going to use my rigger brush, this is this long, thin one, to paint in, what's that, come on, to paint in uh, my darks, and I've got to have the paint just the right consistency for this. Right, we're going for the reeds now with a rigger brush, made it into a blade and I want to paint these very quickly, very thin lines that come right down and off the page. It's sometimes better to do them that way up so you get a thin, a thin end to it. I'm going to go from bottom to top. And lots and lots of thin lines with the rigger brush and then we're going to use a little round brush to paint the the leaves on. So I'll just show you that. I'm then going to take my round brush, that's this one, and come back in when I've painted all of these reeds and just paint all of the little leaves in off the reeds like this. And they don't always join up. They can just be floating in the air a bit, many of them. So the rigger was to give the stems of the reeds and now I'm going to go across and round and curling get all the little effects of the rushes. Now up here um, we've got some larger leaves coming in and I'm going to use the brush again, it's like Chinese brushwork, to dab these leaves on up here like this, all in different directions. And by using my brush in different directions like this I can get the effect of these a little bit more warmth in there, make them come forward a bit, right down into here different size brush strokes and always changing the brush stroke angle so they're slightly different angles as well. So we've got different size leaves, different shaped leaves coming down here. So I've got to paint all of these reeds in quickly just by little flicks of the brush. Lots and lots and lots of them crisscrossing, none of them the same which should be about right when we're painting out of doors in the same way or we're going to be rained upon or eaten by mosquitoes. So these techniques are great ones for actually painting in life, from life. All the way through with those. Lots and lots and lots, especially at the bottom here. That's it nice and subtly. So it's a little bit lighter. Keep looking at the photograph to double check. That's good, that's beautiful. You don't ever do that. That's about right, isn't it? Maybe a little bit stronger yellow here as well then. Yeah coming downwards, that's it, and then you can start on your leaves. Okay. I'm going back to my rushes now, but I've got to Has rush. Anybody not paint? 
You've got plenty there to, to work with me. Yeah, so that's you, what I mean. Yep, so you want to just wash that off. You've got to really clean that brush otherwise it'll... That's that hour just finished. And there we go. How's Emma doing? Emma's now doing her reeds. Emma, you need to make the reeds a bit more um, accidental. They're not all little straights and they do come up at different angles and they're single lines all the way through. Okay. So when you're doing these lines, they all need to be different angles. So you're bringing them right from there, all the way through like this. And one go, right the way through, look. Up and right through, yeah? Right from the bottom. Look, high as you can, that's it. Thin strokes, get plenty of paint in your brush. Not all the same. You did three sets, you've done one, two, three, the same there. Every single, that's better. Every single one, is better, even, if, if, even if the angle changes slightly, yeah? Keep plenty of water on the brush with the paint. But all the way through, and every single stroke I want to see is different, yeah? Uh -huh. There are, Hammer, you can finish that one later, can't you? Now you know exactly what to do. So all you have to do is put those darks in. That's coming beautifully. Look how the beads are coming now, that's it. But you will probably be using a little round brush to do the, the leaves more. Yeah, that, that one's with the thin lines, and you want a little round brush doing the, uh, this little one. You'll want that for doing both the leaves up here and these leaves here because it gives you a nice little see the size is different isn't it mm -hmm. yep so that's are the thin lines and this one <coughs> this size would be for the thicker ones uh, what was blue? that blue what was the blue remember the, the russian blue russian blue no what was it called then? russian blue prussian blue yeah uh.